Hello, my name is John Maynard, and today we're working on Offensive Strategic Body Defense or Offensive Strategic Body Dynamics. This is a very basic intro level for defensive tactics. Uh, what we're doing is we're making things that you already know how to do, that you learned many years ago as a child, and we're going to bring it back and put it in a package for you so you can understand it. The things that we're doing with OSPD will enhance your SOP at your department. We're not showing you anything new. Everything that we do today, pretty much everyone will understand it, but again, it's bringing back those natural gross motor skills that we're born with. The first thing that we'll start with today is called the shield. What this is, if you are attacked, all of a sudden, you can get your hands in front of you. Again, this is a gross motor skill, getting your hands in front of you to protect yourself. And if you watch what happens, uh, again, this is Eric and Mike, and they'll show you what's happening here, guys. So if you watch what Mike just did, it's a basic hands up, elbows up, shooting forward, and it makes no difference what hand they strike with. All you're doing is taking one arm to the center of the body and the other arm which is basically protecting you. So again, it makes no difference what arm they strike with. He does basically the same thing. If you see he got the head down, arms up, creating distance, okay? Adding to what he just did, what we're gonna do now is what's called the throw away. Again, mindset being the most important, movement also being important. So if you watch this time, what happens, as soon as the strike occurs, Mike goes down and he just throws him away from it. We call this throwing him away. All it is is creating distance so you can use your options to do what you need to do to protect yourself and those around you. Let's do it one more time, guys. Just pushes him away. And again, it creates more options. Going over OSBD strikes. Again, these are natural, basic strikes that you use, again, that you already know. Again, we're going to neaten them up a little bit, put them in a little bit better of a package for you, again, which will increase and enhance your SOP. The first strike that we do is called a palm heel strike, and we use three areas to, to use this in. And if you'll watch Mike, he'll be demonstrating on Eric, and he's going to do what's called a palm heel strike. And the three palm heel strikes go this way. Just show the strike. Good. So we're doing it just again, showing the strike. Again, we're going to do that one more time so you can see the basic palm heel strike. It's the heel of your hand pushing forward. You can push up with it, but again, we a lot of officers break their hands using their fist when they punch with it. This is a much better way to strike. And again, you don't have to be the greatest martial artist in the world to use this strike. So again, Michael showed the three strikes, basically the same thing. It's a straight in palm heel strike, straight to solar plexus, and then going down to the femoral artery on the leg, the leg strike. The next one is the hammer fist strike. The hammer fist strike is exactly the same thing from the same area, but again, it's a natural response to striking down. So Mike will show you the hammer fist strike now coming straight down, and hammer fist strike going straight down. Again, it's hitting the bridge of the nose, hitting the head, hitting it, whatever you can hit. Again, your attacks are under duress. The next one is the forearm and or elbow, and a lot of people make a mistake on this because they try to throw it like professional MMA fighters use it, and they're trying to use just that much of their arm. We're going to use everything from our fingertips to the end of our elbow to strike with. It gives us a much greater striking area. Most of us aren't those professional fighters, so we're going to use it giving us the best option to hit and move away. So if you watch Mike again, he's going to show you just a straight forearm strike, and it's just straight to the chest. Now, that's not an elbow. We call it an elbow, but it's a straight strike with anything we can hit with from here to here. The next one is called the jab. The jab is this. He's using his forward hand, and it's just a basic straight punch with your forward hand. It goes straight out, and if you watch how he rolls his shoulder, which protects him from something else coming at him. See how his knuckles roll down? This protects him from using the bad part of his hand this way. So it rolls down this way, turning the thumb to the ground. Same thing with the straight punch. The straight punch is exactly the same thing done with the rear hand, and he rolls his hand over, which gets the good knuckles in there. So again, the hand is rolled completely over. Guys, let's switch that around and do that this way. So again, you'll see Mike using his jab or his forward hand strike. You see it turn, and if he uses his cross, same thing, and it rolls over. This can be done to any part of the body. Again, where do we strike? Anywhere we can. What punch or kick do we use? Anyone that we can use to get us out of trouble so we can create distance and use our options. Let's switch back to them. Okay, the headbutt. With the headbutt, all we're doing here is, is the, the distance has gotten really, really close. So, again, you've been grabbed. Someone's got their hands on you. Whatever happens, we're going to do that with hands off at this point 
So from here, what Mike's going to do is they will move a little bit closer, and this happens right here. If you watch Mike, he's going to trap up. His traps come up, and he's going to drive straight forward with his head. All it is is just a straight headbutt. You see people doing the really cool things where they hold their head back and do it. All we're doing is just trapping up and pushing straight forward. The next one is, is like a billy goat would strike. He's going to trap up, drive his head down, and push straight forward with it like a football player would tackle or like a billy goat would drive straight forward with their head. Why are we using this? It's what we have at the moment. Again, we're trying to create options when we're, when we're doing this part of it. Okay, basically what we're going to do, we're just going to put this together with these few tools that we have, which again is going to help us in a situation to where we are now going hands-on. So as Mike is attacked, all he's going to do is just put a couple of things together. The first thing he does is he's got to protect himself. So from there he does a basic shield. From there he starts striking. He just does a basic web hand, hammer fist strike, palm heel strike, one down low, pushing away. A couple of basic strikes that are real simple, real easy, and all of you guys know this. This is not something that you don't know. What we're working on more than anything else is the mindset and disengaging. So we want to get this done, get this over with, move out, so we can increase our options. Okay, so now we'll start working on knees and kicks. Again, very basic. Uh, we are all born with these things that everybody knows how to knee a little bit and kick a little bit. So the first one, what we're going to use is called a stabbing knee, which means it goes straight forward when you use it. So all he's going to do is just demonstrate it forward first, and this can go anywhere. It can go to the body. It can go to the leg. It can also go with a little bit of upward motion, go to the femoral. So you can strike inside the leg, hitting that femoral. You can also stab with that. This is a more natural knee with an upward motion. Where this would be most likely used would be in the clinch, and we will cover that in just a second. Now working on some basic kicks. Okay, the most the basic kick that we want to use is something that doesn't turn us one way or the other. So for right now, what we're working on is called a push kick, and it's just kicking down a door. And you see people demonstrate these a lot of different ways, but you know, you're not flipping something off your shoe, you're kicking the door down. So if you watch Mike do a straight front kick or a push kick, he kicks up and pushes straight forward. He kicked with his forward leg. It's okay to kick with either leg. Again, once you get constant motion going, you won't know what leg you kick with. It's just you've got to get a post between you and them. It's like a javelin. You're putting something straight between you and the, the other person. This can feed into a lot of different directions, but it does give you some distance. Again, the reason that we really use this all the time is because a lot of kicks are taught, but this is the most basic, most simple kick. Now we're going to work from the ground, okay? This is a place that we don't want to be in. A lot of pe people teach ground fighting. There is no such thing in this. This is survival, so we have to get off the ground. We have been knocked to our back. The thing that we have to do is continue to move and get up. You've got to get up. Mindset, I've got to get up. How do I get up? Any way you can. And you're going to fight from the ground as hard as you can possibly fight the same way you would fight if you were standing up. The first one would be called a spider kick, and this looks funny. It is what it is, but you're working from the ground and you're kicking up and you're punching with your hands. It's that constant motion to keep someone away from you. You can lay on your side, you can lay on your back, you can do anything as long as you're just pushing and kicking. And at this time we're going to be, you know, using our, our mindset, which would be screaming, get off me, get off me, to get that person away from us. Uh, the next one would be for your get up position. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. And the first one that we're doing is just, we call this a technical stand up. This being one that takes a little more skill. He just kicks, he can kick inside or outside, but he's using that leg to give him resistance so he can stand up. From that point, you can use your force options. The next one would be what we call, and it's funny, it's called the bowling ball. So all you're gonna do is just a little bit of a roll. Because of the camera angle, we can only roll just a little bit here. So he just rolls just a little bit, and he turns and gets himself up and gets off the ground. Come back in camera here, Michael. All right, so again, very basic, very simple. And when you get on the ground, you will kick up like that. Again, that's a gross motor skill, someone coming at you. It's what you're going to do. The other one takes a little bit more practice. Okay, now we're working on the clinch. The clinch has a couple of different things that you can use. Uh, one, one is called just a normal clinch, and then we'll go into what is called the fish hook. Okay? So if you look at Eric, uh, Mike's going to demonstrate the fish there's a lot of different ways that you can do the clinch, but we're working on the one that is either just your normal clinch or your fish hook. 
Mike now will show the head plumb, which is a basic clinch position. And if you look at it, he's got his elbows in, head is pulled down, and he's now got control. In this position, he would be moving him around to try to set up for a force option. Okay? The next one would be what's called a fish hook. A fish hook goes off to the side. So he's got one hand here, one hand on the other side. This can go either way. And the good thing about this is you can use this from the side, the front, and the back. So in other words, as an officer, even if I were here, I can use this. I can use this plumb here, especially if I reach up and grab the head. But I've got control, which gives me the ability to push away, and so I can use my force option. It can be done from the front, it can be done from the side, it can be done from the back. What we just went over was the normal head plumb in this position and the fish hook, which can be done any way. You can use it on the arm, the shoulder, under the armpit, you can hook underneath. There's a lot of different things that you can do. But again, this is the 100 level and we're just staying very basic when we do this. Okay, now we're going to work on what is called the head plumb and or the fish hook. It's a clinch. So Mike is going to demonstrate on Eric. He shows first off of a punch. So he basically he did his shield. From that position he is now in what's called a fish hooking position. From there, he can switch it into a head plumb. He takes the head plumb, pulls it down. This can be used and go around the body on the other side. So he can continue moving, and now he can push out, and he can go to other force options. But again, his arms are up, his hands are up, he's protecting himself, he's in the turtle position, and he's protecting himself at all times. With this, you can use it off of what we call a wizard. So from this position, when the punch comes, you'll see what happens, he wraps the arm. This is what we call a wizard, and you can go into your other force options from here, being the most important thing would be to get rid of them, throw them away using your force options. Okay, when using this, the, the grab is really kind of weak, unless you've got great big fingers and you're strong, most of us are not. But the cup of your hand is stronger than your fingers. So when you're doing this, when you're grabbing something, whether it be head, neck, or whatever, and uh, Mike just grabbed Eric, so from that position, it's real simple to get out of. But all he does is just move away. But if you watch the cupped hand, how he's doing it, and he wraps it around, it's much more difficult for him to get out. And especially if he has both of them and they're locked in. And if you notice on the back, both of his hands are cupped against the back of the neck, pulling down using that pressure, and it's much stronger than your fingers being together here. Again, it gives you more options. Okay, now we're working on the sweep and the throw. Again, these are things that you've done your whole life. We're just going to get packaged it a little bit better, show you how to move your feet, get them in position. And the first one is going to be the sweep. Now, on the sweep, this is where people make a couple of mistakes. When you're doing it, it's like a broom sweeping, and you're going to pick it up. So when you grab whatever you're going to grab, and again, what you grab, or well, whatever you can. And all we're doing is pushing the upper body back and down, and the lower body we're picking up. So you're going to create this motion when you do it. It's real basic, real simple. All of us have done this and we've had it done to us before. So from this position, it comes off of a punch. So when this happens, he goes to the shield from that position, he, he moves in, he takes, puts the hand under the chin, takes the leg, shoots it straight up. When he does that, takes him down to the ground, which now he's in a more of a controlled position. And this is where your ground stuff comes in, but we're going to talk about that in just a second. The next thing that we're going to do is called the sweep, and it's, uh, I'm sorry, the next thing that we're going to do is called the throw. So the throw is basically the same thing, but it's a little deeper, and you're going to bump your hip in. Again, this takes a little bit more skill than the other one does, but when you're moving, it's a little bit easier, okay? So from the same position, same thing that just happened. So from here, he rolls into it, he gets real deep and gets his hip in. You notice his hand here gets him around the waist, bumps his hip in, and he just throws him over top of his head. Just a basic hip toss. All of us here have done it. We've all had it done to us. Almost like the throw, same motions. Okay, now we're going to what's called the takedown. In reality, it's a tackle. So all we're doing is, is we're going to reach in, grab the hips. We're going to drive our shoulder, our head, whatever we can get right through them. We're going to pull their hips to us, their legs to us, whatever we can grab, and we're going to go through the target. All we've got to do is just bump their body back, get their feet up a little bit to take them down. Again, we're going to go over the ground positions, a couple of them here in just a minute. But the most important thing here is mindset, I'm going to go through the target. Things have obviously gone bad, 
So I've got to do what I need to do to go through this target to end the threat or at least try to control the threat. So Mike's going to come forward on this. He's going to get low. That gets him out of the firing line. If you watch him, he's going to run all the way through. You'll notice his hands, how he grabs them, pulls them together, and he just bumps him and starts to take him down. Now, we're not going to all the way to the takedown today because I don't want my young learner's assistance hurt because we've had to do this again tomorrow. But what we're doing is, again, if you'll watch this and you watch his entry, this doesn't feel good when you're going through it. Okay, so now we're going over the takedown. Single leg, double leg, whatever you want to call it, we're going to run through our target. Again, we want to control this when we're working with our partners uh, to, to just make sure that we don't get anything to go wrong. Okay, so what we're doing now is the motion, the mindset is the most important, going through the target. And you'll see how much he bumps it back, even just with a controlled position. And what he does is he stops his hips from moving back. So as he does that, his hips will shoot backwards, which is going to throw him off balance. Go ahead, Joe. So as Mike shoots in, he drops below the firing line, and he pulls him in. What he does is he just takes his balance away from him and runs right through the target. Again, we would do this at just a little bit faster speed, but again, we want to work control. We want to make sure that everything is okay. Now what we're going to work on is from this position, we're going to work on what is called a sprawl. So this would be the defensive part of this. So on the other end of it, as he shoots forward, when he comes forward, Mike is going to do your basic OSB position, which is your shield, and use his hands, his arms, his forearms to make sure that he doesn't get his legs. So as Eric shoots forward, Mike just goes to OSBD shields and just pushes him down and away from him. Again, this is going to create options. We do not want to get taken down. It has to be on our terms when we do this. Okay, in OSBD, we have an offense, and everything we have an offense for, we have a defense for. And it basically comes down to your shield getting your hands up. And that covers most everything. Right now, what we're going to do is the defense to the takedown, we're going to go to our shield position, get your feet under you, and Mike will defend against the takedown coming against him. We do not want to be taken down. So what happens here is this, Eric shoots forward, Mike just goes to his OSBD position, which is he's going to his officer shield and he's moving. The main thing here is, is that he wants to stay mobile and continue to move, which will increase his options. Okay, now we're working on a couple of ground positions. These are basic and simple, all of it done before. But again, what we want to do is increase our options with the ability to disengage, get up and increase our options. So now what Mike is going to do, he is going to be in the mounted position, mounted on top, mounted position. So as Mike gets on top in the mount position, he's going to scoot up under his armpits so he can't be thrown off from the bottom. So again, this is the mount position. The next position is the side control. Come to the side, Mike. The side control is just the same thing. He wants to get as deep on the body as he can, driving his body this way down to make sure that he can control this person. Again, we're always thinking about protecting our firearm, but we want to have that thing as tight as we can, knowing where it is at all times. So now we'll put the two together, okay? This is very basic, very simple. So as Mike goes from side control, he switches and goes to mount. Now, there's a little more to this than just flipping over. We'll talk about that in class. When he switches back, he does the same thing. So this gives him an option. Now we'll switch and go to the other side. So from here, he goes to mounted position. So from mounted position, he goes to side control on the other side. He's just controlling that body. Working around, mount position on top, side control, or side mount on the sides. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, now we're working from the mount to the modified mount. And the reason we do this, if the person, if you have a big person, your knees will not touch the ground. So you have to modify this position. And if you watch Mike, he's going to get close to the person so he doesn't have much room to roll. So he modifies his mount position. He can scoop that up if he needs to, so he can get tighter with it. He can push down holding the subject on the ground. From this position, he can switch into side control. From side control, he now can go back into mount, back to modified mount. Now, if the situation allows, what we can do now is start your handcuffing techniques. And at some point, you will have to get to something that looks like this so we can give the person room to turn. We're going to turn them. We're going to help them and make it easy for them. So this is where you can start your handcuffing. So as he gets him and he gets him turned, he gives him the room to do what he needs him to do. Again, whatever your SOP is there, is your SOP. Uh. Okay, now, we're working on the guard. There's a couple of different versions of this. We're just going to give you the basic, simple one, okay? 
There's your closed guard, which means this. You're trying to get your legs around them to control them. And you may not have both legs. You can do this with one leg, but we're trying to get to where we're locked in to control what they're doing. And again, we don't want to be here, but we've been blessed with this, so this is what we have to work with. Now, also the open bar. Many different versions to this. Basic and simple. He's got to pull one or both legs back to get some type of control. He scoots his backside bottom out from that position. He starts pushing on the person. And this is called an open guard. Again, there's many different versions of this. From here is where we work the get up position. And remember I said one is just a little bit more challenging than the other one. He will show you that now. So from here, turns to his side, pushes against him, starts to get up, uses his body to control. Now he can disengage or re-engage and using his force options. Okay, now we're working on weapons retention. We do what's called a single snuggle and a double snuggle. And Mike will show you first the single snuggle. All it's going to do is he protects his weapon, he goes into a basic shield. How do you move? You just move. Don't be there. As he comes out, the next one you will see, he will go to guns. From that position, single snuggle, he comes out, he goes to guns. As you see what they're doing with what we're teaching, we always tap and rack just to make sure everything is okay. Whatever your SOP is, is what it is. Next, we're going to do the double snuggle. From this position, Hands go on, you're taking both your hands, driving that weapon down. So as Eric shoots forward, he takes both of his hands down. How do you move? You move. You move your body. From that position, he comes out, same thing again, there'll be a tap rack, and he goes from that position, controlling the situation. You must protect that weapon. Your life depends on it. Many, many officers are shot and killed with their own weapons. We don't want that to happen. We want to protect that weapon. We're going to protect that weapon. We're going to snuggle down on that thing, we're going to hunker down, we're going to drive it against our hip, and we're going to get out of there. Whatever we've got to do, however we have to fight, we've got to get out of there. We have to move. Movement is the key. Mindset is the key. You're not taking my weapon. Period. End of list. Okay, what Mike's going to do now is he's just going to show you the very basic what we use as our SOP in Offensive Strategic Body Defense. He doesn't know what he's going to do. It's reactionary, but he's going to show it to you, and I guarantee you, three times it's going to be close, but none of them will be exactly the same. Go ahead, sir. Number two coming up. And number three coming up. So you can see they're all basically the same. He moved the same way every time. That's fine, as long as you're moving. If we have to continue to move, we move. If we have to fight to the ground, we fight to the ground. If we have to fight from the ground, we fight from the ground. We never give up. You never, ever give up. You can't. That is not an option. At this level, what we're working on is we want to create an option. When this comes out, it is not a takeaway. It's go time. You'll see what I'm talking about here. We're going to let Mike go just a little bit when this happens. All he does to create an option, he slaps the gun away, and he's prepared to fire at that point, and he goes to work right now, banging anything he can do. From that point, he's trying to get to a control position. Will he rip it out? That's up to him. Right now, he's got to get to that control position. Yes, at some point, you need to get that weapon away. But for right now, what we're doing, very basic, very simple, I've got to save my life right now to do this. There are takeaways. At the 100 level, not quite there yet. We're going to show it to you so you see a rip away, and there's nothing cool about it. You grab it, and you rip it out of their hand. So this time, when they get tied up, you'll see him rip the weapon away. Slaps away, grabs the gun, he takes it, he reaches back in, pulls it free, taps racks, goes to work. Again, at this level, all we're trying to do is get out of the firing line and create an option. And if you watch Mike at this point, this is what happens. He has, the things that are going to happen to you is shock, disbelief, and acceptance. He has to get to acceptance, and you'll see what I'm talking about. He is now getting ready to accept that a gun is in his face. From that point, he slaps it, moves it out of the center line, he's out of the center line, he goes to work. From that point, he goes to his gun and fires. Tap, rack, and bang from that point, okay? Did he have the gun? Not sure. Was it slapped out of his hand? Not sure. But at some point, he has to go to guns. We'll do it this time, and we'll do it with a little bit of a rip away so you can see a little bit of difference. The gun was grabbed. We happen to catch it. He rips it away with his body when he does it. From that point, now he has two guns. We all have to know that when we do this, which places, gentlemen? 
when we do this, that there's always one gun here. There's always one gun in this situation. We have to remember that. Same thing, different angle. You notice again, he's ripping away with that body. He's going to his weapon. Again, that's not pretty. Is it cool? Not sure, but it worked. Okay, again, going back to Officer Shield, we have more arms than we do hands, more length. What happens now is there's a firearm in your back. So from your back, like you turn, he now has a firearm in his back. So he's pleading at this point. When he turns, he goes to work. There will be no hesitation. It's go time. It's get things out there. Okay, the same thing works from the side. The same officer shield position. Noticing that Mike's going to gun again. Same thing happens from the side. So this position, a weapon comes to your side. It's exactly the same thing. Officer shield position, he just goes to work. And they are done from both sides the same way. Again, we're turning, using that turn motion, trying to get out of the center line, but we're going to work with the option of going to guns. Okay, what I'm going to do now is show just the basic concept of OSBD, and we're just going to work, and we call this kind of an offensive-defensive thing. He's just going to be my partner in this drill. We're going to work and not injure each other. I'll be the offensive person through this. I carry my firearm like this every day, so I must train to task with it in my pants this way. Most of the time, it would be under my shirt, but so you can see it, and if it comes out, I will have to do other things. Is it going to come out? Not sure, but if it does, I'm going to get to it if at all possible. So when this starts to make sure that I get the advantage, all I'm going to do is just some basic things, strikes. And that's what a fight looks like. Was there anything pretty about it? No. Fighting's not pretty. Fighting is mean and it's ugly. You have to come out on top. You never stop. You have to keep going. I couldn't take him down, so I had to fight from that position. At some point, I couldn't even get free from him, so I had to continue fighting from that position. With OSPD, the more it expands, we will show you a few more things. If you saw my little tricky thing, my hat there going forward, all I had to do was just take his mind off of me just for a second. You can use anything. If you know this is going to happen, you have to get an advantage at some point. And that's what we're working for. Force options, advantage. Force options, advantage. Train to task. If you are tat geared up, and that's how you, the, the things you're going to be doing, and you're a SWAT team or whatever, you must train that way. These things are different when you have all your gear on and you have a pistol, you have your, your short gun, you have your long gun, whatever you have, you have to remember to train to task. It changes things the more stuff you have. And again, we didn't teach you anything new today. All these things you already know, but we're putting them in a package. Again, it's mindset more than anything else. Mindset and move. On our shirts, it says, move dummy. You have to move. If you can't do anything else except move, you have to move. And movement can be in and out, side to side, up and down, but you can't stand here. So none of us are, you know, have the greatest movement skills in the world, but we have to continue to move. Movement creates movement. From here, you're stopped. It's easier to get started from here, so you're always moving. Hands are going to be up in front. Again, OSBD is only going to increase uh, your options and it's only going to increase and help your SOP. Thank you very much. Have a great day.